Yeah. But yes, I'm at Home Depot with the new Denali, so we can scientifically compare payload capacity. I'm all ready. <laughs> no, it's, it's not that kind of truck. What do you mean? It's a pickup. It is meant for towing, hauling, and work. What else would you do? Why would you say that? Woo! Because the Raptor can do so much more than to go to Home Depot. <laughs> I can do woohoo! This is so ridiculous! What this thing can do? I'm in love with this raptor! <laughs> This is what the Raptor name stands for. We might not be in California, we might not have deserts, but we can still <laughs> do fast off-roading and kind of Baja running in this beast. And oh my God, it's ridiculous. Like, whatever you throw at it, the biggest ruts, the biggest things, the thing can literally jump and it's fine. And it's just this like, look at this, the control I have on this uneven terrain, bam, take it, no worries, it's not even bottoming out, it just takes everything you throw at it. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. And there's nothing as capable as this Ford Raptor when it comes to Baja Run. Yes, a Wrangler or a Bronco might be better on slower trails and rock crawling, but this Raptor is unbeatable on, on Baja Run. The TRX is good, but you got the V8 in front which of course gets a little weight. And I've yet to test the TRX, fair enough. But <laughs> this is just ridiculous. Look at the control and I could just send it. <laughs> oh my God, this is amazing. And it's just, this Baja mode just keeps it in control, even under braking, completely stable. No problems whatsoever. Send it out of corners. Now we want to be a little slower here because that's a little hill take that and then we're going back here and <laughs> can you tell I'm having a blast it is absolutely ridiculous like the amount of work you have to put in to stay stable yourself because it just constantly goes up and down is amazing. but it's 100% controllable I am this is the second time I'm ever off-roading. And you can see how easily I'm taking this thing around these ruts and hills and all this without a problem because it is so incredibly controllable. At the same time, I got my camera in here in Baja mode always showing me the front camera so I know what's up ahead, which is pretty useful because trust me, guys, you don't see much out of this thing if you're going down a trail. Speaking of trails, of course, this can also go on trails which I had to go through on my way here yes it's a little white might not be perfect for trails but uh it sounds good yes it's a quick 36 but the sound is stupid heard that pop this thing sounds like a GTR I don't know why but it does it's awesome I love it I love every second how this thing sounds but let's go on a bit more slower speed trail driving oh and just calm down but let's do some slow speed off-roading now this might not be rock crawling per se um, but it is slow speed it is more looking for articulation finding the right line through the terrain and getting up these hills and the I, I just love the off-road gauges here they show me it's the whole time like what kind of angle we're having i have a whole pov test, test drive by the way where we go off-roading and i literally can't see that's why my camera's good <laughs> let's take that little hill here a little and go up okay you know slow speed still nice and controlled and of course we have all the goodies you could need you have trail descent control you have four low which i mean you'd expect but uh, we have a rear diff lock here. Of course, this is not necessarily made for raptors. We're a little wide, but it takes it no problem, not even a complaint. 
whatever you throw at it, this raptor, it just eats it up. It is absolutely, like I said, um, you can technically jump it. The first generation had a few issues with it. They fixed it for the second. And the third one, I doubt they made it worse. Here, even the angle, we got 14 degrees of banking right now. Probably 15 here, 15 degrees of banking. Keep it nice and tight. Go around. Wonderful. And now up these ruts. And nice and controlled. And I mean, yes, I'm getting thrown around. But honestly, I'm still pretty comfy. Like the seats have a lot of side control, a lot of lateral control. So I don't have an issue. And here, I could do this. I could literally do this all day. All day. Do this all day. And I think the Raptor could do. But oh, this is fun. This is ridiculous fun. I would love to do this all day, but we have to keep this review to a certain time frame. And there is one more aspect we have to talk about, of course, a big aspect, which is just regular driving because you got to get to the trail somehow. <laughs> I love this. You got to get to the trails somehow. So why don't we take this off the trails and go back towards civilization? <laughs> back towards civilization and drive on actual roads and see how the Raptor handles on that. But let's first take a second and talk about how awesome this Raptor looks and kind of go over the design. Of course, First of all, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. It's the longest, widest, tallest vehicle I have ever driven. And it dwarfs me. L literally, the hood goes up to my throat. So, uh, yeah. Don't hit people, if you don't have Don't hit people. Uh, <laughs> but it just looks fantastic. It looks so awesome. Of course, we got the Ford grille that is typical of the Raptor, and everybody tries to copy on the normal F-150s. And then we got the marker light, the orange marker lights, running around with the DRLs up to the side here just of course for regulatory reasons because it's just so wide it needs to have them it looks super aggressive i love how this looks color by the way it's rapid red i think a very good color probably if i had to pick one i'd go with rapid red the orange is nice but it's nice this is just such a nice color of course we have our 37 inch package uh, so we have the 37 inch tires the other ones you can get standard at 35s these one actually compromise your um, your suspension trail by about an inch, and you get two more inches of wheel, so it kind of evens out again. Of course, we have our Raptor branded steps, so we can actually see the roof and got a little sunroof up there. And then walking towards the back, we have our graphics here, which are actually really cool with the 37 inch package. First of all, we have 37 written on here, but then we have a topographical map and the route of the Baja 1000 in Mexico, so like really big Baja race. Of course, makes sense. We have a Baja truck, right? I love, love, love how this looks. Everybody, like, I've, of course, on Instagram, I always do the Q and A's, right? And everybody, like, kind of takes it and is like, "Oh wow, this looks awesome." <laughs> City folks, country folks, everybody's like, "Yeah, this looks awesome." But let's talk interior because at over 100 grand Canadian, you do want to have a nice interior. And I have to step up into that. I'll show you a clip from off-roading where we had it propped up for like a photo shoot, and I had to climb in and. It can get quite hilarious and I love jumping out of trucks. It just kind of feels good. It's fun. Anyhow, interior. I'm getting lost in telling funny stories. <laughs> Easy to get into thanks to the handles and once again, I love the Ford Charms. They're just very comfy. Well, comfy as in they sound nice, of course. And yeah, first time in an F-150. I like it. Very functional interior. Although, to be fair, for the price, uh, we're looking at $111,000 Canadian. Of course, that's with like almost $25,000 of options. I just wish it would be a little nice because some of the materials are just very plasticky, right? There's a lot of plastics littered around. All the materials everywhere you touch are really good, really plush. The steering wheel is huge, very thick. Got a noon marker up top, but actually it feels very nice. The seats themselves, super, super comfy. Honestly, some of the most comfy seats I've had in any vehicle so far. These are extremely comfy, hold me in place very well. As you can see, like big amounts of lateral support, but that's what you expect from Recaros. These are Recaros after all. You can get speakers up here. Our B&O system is pretty good, but let's get a little bit to functionality here. We have our digital gauge cluster 
up top which I like a lot it is very clear great animation especially when we switch like drive modes first of all very satisfying click <laughs> and um, looks very good great animation super fluid and you can change so many things and have your off-road displays very useful I love this then we have our center infotainment which is sync 4 and I love sync 4 and not the most feature rich necessarily but it is super quick it is visually very pleasing I think it looks great and we have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay Wireless, very well integrated within the infotainment. They don't take up the whole screen. I really like this. Sync 4 is probably one of my, if not my most favorite um, infotainment system on the market. We have like diff locks, we have like everything and the same aux switches that we had in the Bronco, which I just love and I keep playing with because they're so satisfying, even though we have nothing hooked up <laughs> to them. Uh, big old sunroof, which I like. And then lastly, one neat feature this F-150 has since the refresh is if you need a little more space, you know, sometimes you have maybe some, some, some stuff you need to fill out, some forms, you have your laptop you want to put somewhere, or hey, you, you just want to eat, right? And it's kind of weird to eat here with a steering wheel in front of you. Well, you just press this button and your shifter, not quite gracefully, but it does it, gets down and then you pop this up and you have a huge workspace. You can put your Happy Meal right here. You can put your laptop right here. You can put your forms, your folders, whatever you need right here and you have plenty of space to work on it. This is such a great idea. I love this. And then of course, once you're ready to drive, you just pop back up and use your shifter. Love that. But I would say with that, let's go back on the road. Okay, now driving the Raptor here on actual paved roads. But as always, we start off with a bit of a launch. So start, stop, off. Traction control, off. We want to put her into sport. Everything's ready. Brake torque, not too long because otherwise we're going to do a little burnout. Okay, there we go. <laughs> She's quick. She is quick. All right, I think that's enough. Let's break her down. She breaks really well too, though. Okay, let's get back into a sport exhaust. Let's just go to normal first, normal driving mode. Exhaust into sport start stop on traction control is back enabled awesome so driving the Raptor on the road is considering how off-road capable this truck is surprisingly easy it's and surprisingly comfy I would have expected this to be a little hard to place being like around 86 inches in width so I would have expected it to be kind of you know you have to always have to like check left right and all that super easy to place because the steering is very easy very precise and allows you to place the truck just exactly where you want it like I had smaller trucks that were like way harder for me to kind of gauge where it is just put the exhaust into normal and once you're on the road it is comfy it is very very comfy the ride is surprisingly good this is up there with like the best riding vehicles I've been in this isn't much worse than an Escalade with the air suspension this is very very close super comfy it's not too loud of course I mean it's still big off-road or a lot of wind resistance you have a lot of stuff happening down below it is not like dead silent but it is overall pretty quiet and the stereo is able to over like overtone any frequencies you may not want to hear but getting back to the engine because that's uh, with the Raptor that's uh, that's kind of like a big thing right uh, because everybody's like oh, it's only got a v6 and you're right it only has a v6 well this one and, and anyway uh, bu 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 bu. let's turn around And it's kind of stupid how it sounds <laughs> because it's like on the uh, in the exterior clips you probably already heard it it sounds like a GTR because they did some funny things with the exhaust they gave it like a trombone exhaust I'll show you some footage where it loops around itself once to kind of give it uh, create equal length headers and what that does is give us this really really nice and meaty V6 noise and it sounds good we've got the 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 and you're producing 450 horsepower and 510 pound feet of torque and that is plenty this thing because we got turbos spools up so quick it just goes it just goes puts the power down oh, 
<laughs> it just puts the power down. And the 10 speed right here, I've never driven it in a Ford. I've had it in plenty of GM vehicles. The first time I've had it in a Ford. Of course, reacts pretty well. And like I said, we do have pedals. So we are in eighth gear. I don't really recommend shifting yourself because there's just so many gears. Seventh, sixth, fifth, fourth, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Unless you like shifting, <laughs> then this is perfect for you. But no, the transmission does a perfect job. Even when we were Baja running, I had it in I had it in automatic all the time because it just knows what to do. And it does a very good job. So very nice drivetrain combination. But yes, it's not a V8. I, I think this is a great engine, this EcoBoost, this Twin Turbo EcoBoost v, uh, V6. But I get it. Um, it's, it's like somebody will put this in a Mustang, right? It's still a great engine. But it's, and then they call it a GT. It's, 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 it's not a V8. I get it. Purist, yes. Um, I'm not that fixated on V8 Raptors. I love V8s, don't get me wrong. It's not an issue for me, but I get it for people that have an issue with that. But this generation, of course, we do get the Raptor R coming, which has the GT500's 5.2 liter Predator supercharged V8 in there. So that's coming. So if you want to have V8 in your Raptor, this generation again, you'll be able to. And I can wait to drive that. Um, it'll absolutely demolish my budget for this channel because <laughs> it's going to be so bad on gas. But I'm absolutely down and I'm going to go to my Ford and be like, okay, the second you get the Raptor R in the fleet, I want to have it because this Raptor itself is incredible. I've been long fascinated with the Raptor and I wanted to drive it and I just, I just wanted to see how capable it was because I, I had no... It's like when you get into like a really fast sports car for the first time. It was like, wow, okay. I had no idea uh, it was physically possible for a truck that is street legal to be this good off-road <laughs> and at the same time be this good on-road, but it is. And I, I totally get why people daily drive it. Fuel economy actually isn't too bad considering what it is. Um, I'm averaging, if I'm driving normally, about 16, 16 liters per 100 kilometers, mixed city and highway. and if I had a three car garage and the money for it, a Raptor would be in there. It's great. I love this and um, I can't wait to drive a Raptor again. And I'm gonna be very, very sad in a couple of days when I have to get this back, but that's awesome. And I think with that being said, we should send it off to the final thoughts. Okay, final thoughts on the third generation Ford F-150 Raptor. Um, Finally having driven one, it did not disappoint. It did not disappoint at all. The capabilities this Raptor has off-road is uncomprehensible. <laughs> unless, you, unless you do it yourself, like what this just eats up. And we, we haven't gone to the limit. We haven't gone close to the limit. Like some of the bounces we did, yeah, they were, they were pretty tough on it, but it just takes it. It just takes it and it is so controllable it is so fun and especially with the exhaust it is kind of stupid but in a good way it is just hilarious amounts of fun and all that while being extremely well mannered on the road being super comfortable to drive and yeah it is kind of a complete package i'll be honest now at a price of 111,434 dollars canadian us dollar price is always on your screen you kind of expected to be the complete package and I can see why people daily drive it not only because it's possible but also for $111,000 getting then the budget for another car might be a little tough <laughs> but no this is it's worth it might be controversial to say that but I, I think it's totally worth it to be fair this one has about $25,000 of options um, Ford spent so much so much time making sure that this Ref 150 Raptor is special it is purpose-built and it can do whatever you ask from it and I, I think they succeeded this is a serious capable machine and I think that justifies the price point so yeah no I, I really enjoyed it now we only need to test the TRX and then we get the good competitor hopefully I uh, come in later this year anyhow uh, thank you so much for watching the video i hope you enjoyed it and you might have noticed that i if you watch the first video i spent a lot more time a lot more effort in making this video and i put in i tried a few new things because i finally finished my diploma so i can actually take the time and invest it into this channel there's always a learning curve to this though so if you notice anything that like maybe didn't quite work out that i can work on please 
put that in the comments like let me know because together if we work on this we can make the best videos possible and that's my goal i want to give you guys the best videos possible and um if you enjoyed the video of course please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell because the more subscribers i get the more cool cars and trucks i can show you on a weekly basis anyhow thank you so much for watching i hope you liked it i hope i'll see you in the next one and thank you and goodbye